Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to our friends all over the world. Uh, welcome to our next session of the Podinar for Global Summit. I am Dr. Emily Letran. I'm one of the hosts here at the Global Summit. And I am totally honored and excited to be talking to Dr. Saeed Kazemi all the way from Sweden. And of course, you know that I'm in Southern California. So I was just chatting with him. Uh, it, it sounds cold already, just mentioning mm -hmm. the, the name of the country. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Saeed Kazemi is a dentist, a software developer, a 3D CAD and 3D printing specialist, and an entrepreneur residing in Sweden. Uh, over the years, he has been continuously developing new, new and innovative dental training and presenting them to the market. In addition to his daily routine, he is giving lectures in software programming at Christiandad University, and also he's a guest lecturer in digital dentistry at different schools. He has achieved uh, second place in Sweden's royal recognition and first place in Scania provincial recognition, awarded for his academic knowledge and his creative approach in establishing DRSK company in 2010. He also was recognized as an Entrepreneur of the Year in 2009 with student background in Christiandad University. He has two published patent applications for dental training models. He's currently serving as CEO of DSRK, a company specialized in presenting innovative solutions and services to the dental field by embracing the knowledge of cutting edge digital dentistry. Doctor, welcome to the party now this morning. Hello. So, uh, first of all, honor is on my side. Thank you very much for inviting me. And I would say hello to everybody around the world. Um, and yeah, so I uh, should uh, start with saying that uh, English is not my native language. And I hope that with my uh, content, I can compensate a bit uh, the lack of uh, language efficiency that I have. So I'm here. Mm -hmm. Well, doctor, that's, uh, uh, you, you would be so comfortable to know that we have such an international um, mm -hmm. group of doctors on Global Summit, uh, mm -hmm. guests and hosts. We are international. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and we have uh, an international audience, mm -hmm. so um, and these and these partners are also available. After we do it live, they they are on the global summit uh, global summit Facebook page. So people mm -hmm. can always go back and, and mm -hmm. watch it over and over. You know, in case mm -hmm. something didn't mm -hmm. seem very clear, you know, whether what we say or maybe the content. Uh, mm -hmm. So it we we will have it live on forever, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, mm. so you, I know you um, originally from from Iran. Mm -hmm. Correct. And how did you how did you get all the way to uh, Sweden? Actually, it was a very interesting journey. Uh, uh, I started uh, my dentistry when I was twenty four almost, and before that, I was uh, self training with uh, some programming uh, courses um, and uh, after I got into the dentistry I still had the passion of being a software developer uh, finishing my education I started to work in Tehran and uh, I was employed in uh, in Tehran University uh, so everything was excellent for me but I understood that in Sweden there is a very interesting uh, program uh, which is exactly the same that I want and it's a very calm country and uh, uh, I mean living in a very uh, crowded Tehran I just thought that it would be very interesting that I get out for some years and I will have uh, I, I, I wanted to have actually some uh, peace of mind and then uh, studying what I uh, like to study and it was my passion. So that was the beginning of the trip or the journey to Sweden. Right. You know, a lot of us and and, and um, I think that's very impressive because a lot of people 
even though they dream big, they don't necessarily follow the dream. Uh, mm -hmm. And in your case, it's that's moving across the world, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you know, very, very, very far. And uh, mm -hmm. because there's an opportunity, right? And mm -hmm. it, it it piques your interest because you mm -hmm. you like to do the the research and you know that um, mm -hmm. the particular program supports your your endeavors. So, mm -hmm. do you think? Um, you know, would you recommend, I, I guess that would be my question, would you recommend for a dentist if they have those kind of dreams to actually search for those opportunities or those places and uh, take that kind of drastic move? <laughs> Obviously mm -hmm. it works for you. I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. wondering because there's a, I know some, some, you know, some of our colleagues, they may have, um, you know, besides practicing clinical dentistry, they, they may have that passion developing mm -hmm. um, software. You you mentioned be, well, before we got on, we were chatting and you were mentioning an app, right? Um, mm -hmm. There are quite a lot of apps out there, but I'm sure you're, uh, you're in Sweden and, it, and it's such a um, country that, you know, really help you do research. I mean, Sweden is known for, um, for those kind of innovations uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not exactly a researcher, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but but I know that um, you know when you when you have the, those dreams and you want to follow them, and if you put yourself in the right place, maybe with the right mentor, the right help, and I'm sure you got the support there, um, mm -hmm. then those dreams can be realized much faster. So, um, what what do you think? Would would you? Mm -hmm. Would you Actually, recommend somebody to do exactly what, 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 <laughs> what, when, what it, you do? when it comes to recommendation, I think it will be very difficult for me to say anything positive or negative because uh, it's all about the person, uh, her or himself. So my nature was like mm, what I am today. I mean, I, my, my, I like to be what I am today. So it very much depends on the person uh, characteristic and, you know, the dreams. Uh, but Sweden is an excellent place for uh, development of uh, ideas and you know that the uh, the rate of uh, the rate of uh, innovations is quite high in in, in right. Sweden and the, I mean the schools are very supportive extremely supportive everything is helping you to get uh, to the point that you are planning for of course there are always lots of problems in on the way but uh, uh, still, uh, everything is helping the society to move forward, to to go toward that uh, that uh, innovation or any goal that the person has, uh, and also you know the 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 um, part which is outside the university. I mean, I got a lot of help from uh, organizations which were helping me to to finance my patent and also invest in the company so the beginning was excellent so i think sweden is a very excellent place to, for such people if they want to move to somewhere if they think it's 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 uh, interesting or it's right. compulsory for them to move mm -hmm. yeah and so you so you right now you um you're basically running the company, right? Your mm -hmm. your company. Mm -hmm. And what is the what are some of the things that you're currently working on with your company? Actually, we are mainly concentrating on dental models, training models, while we are uh, contributing with the uh, 3D modeling of uh, of of the different things or different models that the companies uh, inquire from us. Um, so mainly we are working with uh, dental education, but, uh, but uh, not only dental education, but uh, applying the dental, uh, the, the, sorry, digital technology knowledge that we have into the uh, requirement of the uh, project. So, Today we are mainly supplying 
uh, dental training models to more than, I think, 40 countries uh, and also to around 100 uh, customers, which are mainly universities. So that's the main thing that we are doing. But um, just parallel uh, to that, we are uh, working with uh, leading companies uh, like Cavo, uh, Colton, uh, and money, some of the companies which are um, internationally well known, we are supplying solutions to them. So that is the main thing that we are concentrating on. Well, that sounds wonderful because I think um, since digitally, uh, the dentistry is such a hands on, right, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. profession, uh, the models always help us understand better um, mm -hmm. instead of obviously practicing on a live person. Um, dur mm. during the, the teaching procedure sometime. And mm. uh, you're one of those uh, forward thinker in, in 3D and digital dentistry. So mm. um, uh, I'm gonna just turn the floor to you so you can share your expertise and, and your presentation. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. So then uh, I should start if, uh, yeah. Yeah, I see that now I have the floor. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about digital dentistry applications in dental training and educations. Before that, I uh, should thank uh, the uh, group, uh, the uh, summit group, which uh, gave me this opportunity to introduce what I'm doing. Uh, so let me see if I can have uh, so it was working just a couple of seconds ago and now it's not working let me see maybe I should close it and open it again it's shared but uh, let me stop sharing or says that it's sharing but it's it is just sorry for always like that <laughs> so let me remove it and then close it on my computer Yeah. I'm trying to open it. Okay, let me see. Now I have it here. Let me check to share my screen. Okay. Uh, no, I don't have the presentation. You don't have. I'm sh I'm sharing it. It says that it is shared, but uh, it is not shown. No. Uh. Uh, you need to stop sharing this uh, screen and uh, click on the application window.
the start, but it is uh, okay. So I think now I have something here. I'm sharing. Yeah. And now I have the presentation. I'll just put it on screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you able to go to it? So let me see if I'm able to navigate. Okay. You uh, need to go to the PowerPoint. Exactly. Are you on the PowerPoint or on the B Live screen? I'm in the on the PowerPoint now. Now it's correct. Okay. So, sorry for this interruption. So, uh, um, I just shortly want to say that again, I'm coming from Iran, the capital city, Tehran, uh, and then uh, I'm living in Sweden, southern part of Sweden. And uh, you see in the map, uh, the distance between these two parts of the uh, two continents. Uh, this is an image of uh, the city BAM located in the central part of Iran. I have some QR codes that uh, you can later on uh, scan them and read about the places that I have taken photos from or the content that I have provided in the, in the uh, presentation. So this is a lake just uh, some kilometers away from the place that I'm living. It's called Finia Lake. And uh, you can get some information about this nice place also. So my education, as uh, was explained, was from three universities. Uh, I have an associated uh, degree in radiology technology. And also I finished my uh, dental education in Tehran University. Uh, after moving to Sweden, I completed my bachelor and I started my embedded system uh, master uh, master uh, program. So my recent uh, professional uh, positions had been uh, the CEO of the company that I established it in 2009 and also in Kristianstad University. Actually, it's written Christianstad in English, but uh, in local language they call it Kristianstad uh, uh, or Kristianstad. And um, yeah, so I'm part-time working there as a teacher, uh, but uh, nowadays it's tapered down due to having a lot of uh, other tasks in, in the company as it's growing. Uh, but anyway, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying uh, being with some of the teachers there and also the students, which are always uh, giving me a lot of um, good vibes and also inspiration to think about uh, the new stuff. Uh, since COVID is a very, uh, uh, very uh, 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 I mean, everybody is talking about COVID nowadays. I just wanted to describe the situation in Sweden, as you see, in the slide, this is the normal life that we have. I mean, this is a normal day. I have taken the photo uh, in September, end of September. So you see that nobody is wearing any mask and there is no protection like the other parts of the world. I don't know if this is a good situation for us or maybe in the future we regret why we haven't protected ourselves. Uh, a bit better than what uh, we have done. But anyway, the only thing that we are doing here is social distancing and also following the very basic and preliminary hygienic uh, uh, procedures. Uh, so here I have a very interesting uh, picture from Copenhagen 
airport, the airport that we usually from southern part of Sweden traveling from. Uh, so uh, I was uh, uh, traveling uh, in end of September, actually, and this was a very horrifying uh, image that uh, there was nobody there. It's not midnight, it's in the middle of the day, actually. Uh, you can hardly see two or three people in the picture. Uh, and here is another image of the shops, which were all closed. Uh, and I found this uh, solid thing that is written here. I'm not good at brands at all. So if you see, it's a solid and there is an exclamation mark before that. And it's interesting that in uh, digital technique or the, the, the computer sciences, that exclamation mark is called uh, not or it's a sign of negation. And I was very uh, interested in this view that I uh, tried to uh, take a shot from that. And I thought that it's trying to say that we are not solid, we should be careful. Uh, so uh, I should move to introduce my company, DRSK Group Abe. Actually, I call it my company because I established the company. I feel that I own it uh, a bit <laughs> or to some extent uh, because I'm now a shareholder and also the CEO of the company. So the company is... Uh, uh, located in the southern part of Sweden and we are trying to establish a bridge between dentistry and computer sciences or digital technology. So uh, if we, I want to a bit elaborate what we are doing in the company, actually we are working with uh, three different uh, items or uh, th three different main uh, categories, which is dentistry, education, and computer science. And as you see in, in our company, we have our customers uh, based in the center of the circle, and we are trying to be uh, uh, ha trying to have the approach of cost being customer-centric uh, company. And uh, from there, we are supplying product and services to the to the uh, dental market. So this is the thing that the company is doing today. I am a part of the company, and uh, there are colleagues of mine who are very committed to what we are doing, and we are trying to to um, deliver the best uh, product to the market. So talking about digital technology, I, I'm not going to read the worst ever uh, slide that I have ever made uh, because it's a lot of work there. So uh, digital uh, technology is a knowledge uh, that deals with creation of uh, practical uh, items uh, and also uh, methods and systems uh, to the, to the market and uh, you are all already using a lot of those type of uh, applications in a daily basis so whatever you are using which starts with E probably is something coming from a computer science or from a digital technology like email, e-commerce, e-learning. Nowadays, it's very much uh, appreciated, this e-learning part and e-publishing, e-banking and so on. And in uh, daily life, we have a lot of different uh, products which are um, coming from the digital technology uh, or computer science uh, segment and it is uh, you are using every day these items digital cameras uh, the home appliances smart houses uh, smartphones gps 3d printers and so on so why digital technology is growing actually uh, the reason uh, there there are many reasons but i have just uh, listed six of them uh, one of the reasons is that it's fast and it's simple 
uh, it's high precision and also you get the predictable result and also you can predict what you want to do not only the result but during the process of working and also it reduces the uh, the the consumption of the material energy and also it uh, reduces the waste uh, if I look at the uh, crucial considerations in, in dentistry, I will see that uh, th these six are overlapping. The six main, at least in my eyes, or maybe other people that I have talked to, six main uh, considerations, which is the speed, simplicity, pre precision, uh, predictability, less energy and less material waste. Uh, so, uh, hence, see, the dentistry is uh, very, I mean, having a high priority uh, for um, developing new digital uh, uh, applications. So we have many different applications which are helping dentists to get these uh, six uh, goals or uh, at least helping them to get closer or improve themselves in these six uh, areas. So uh, I want to stop here and get uh, a bit out of this uh, boring line of, you know, just talking, I'm just talking to the camera and I don't feel anybody in front of me. Maybe a piece of advice which are making you different in the future compared to what you are today, if you are not already what I want to say, or if you don't already know what I want to say. So I was talking to my students that if you want to be digitally literate you should always learn five uh, editors uh, when i say editors i mean software editors you should learn how to work with words a word editor which is normally i mean exceptionally uh, some other people are using uh, other uh, applications but uh, th there are word editors in 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 any computer that you buy uh, in in windows we have a word editor which is called microsoft word of course you know that uh, i have no idea what is what is it called in mac actually i'm not a mac user at all uh, I think the next thing that I want to recommend is an image uh, editor, uh, which is uh, mainly uh, Photoshop that I'm using, and I can recommend that. Sound editor, download Wave Pad, which is a free software. Video editor, there are many, uh, both uh, paid and also free of charge editors and also 3d 3d is the main thing that a dentist should know in the future 3d editing is extremely important so just please remember these five so uh, we have many uh, digital dentistry applications uh, that you have already used uh, for data management, for radiology, like for example, uh, the, the machine itself or uh, the, the processors, this uh, C, uh, CMOS uh, plates or phosphor plates. And also in orthodontics, you know that uh, there are these uh, new, uh, new um, technologies which will help the uh, the, the, the um, practitioner to to make what uh, he wants to make much faster and much easier i'm not going to go through details of that you already have heard about it uh, prosthodontics and restorative there are many different things uh, the most well known one is uh, the milling machines uh, cat cam machines and also about implants the navigation for example systems that are uh, very much known now and also uh, the the guides that are produced by by the digital uh, dentistry or digital technology and also in surgery uh, specifically we have many areas that the um 
the practitioner can get help from digital dentistry. So namely here, the uh, treatment planning, for example, displaying the results. So before uh, the patient uh, go through the process of surgery, it's possible, to, uh, you know, that uh, we predict it on either uh, virtual machines or um, on on a printed uh, model to show to the to the uh, to the um, patient if i can call the person how the face will look like of course if this uh, it's it's it's, it's it, using the word patient maybe it's not the correct word actually uh, maybe i should call the person uh, surgical guides uh, are there to help the uh, surgeon to make a better uh, and faster, uh, of course, uh, mm, uh, surgery. Uh, and also performing surgery itself. So the it's called robotic, robotic uh, surgery. Uh, and um, yeah, so there are many things going on in that area, which I'm not the person to talk about it. About prosthetics and uh, maxillofacial implants, I'm going to show one of the uh, cases that uh, I, through the company DRSK, did with uh, uh, Tehran University of Medical Sciences, Dr. Uh, Apasi and Dr. Azari. Dr. Apasi is a surgeon, a maxillofacial surgeon, and Dr. Azari is a, a prosthetic dentist. Uh, so they had a case which was referred to me. The part that I have covered with the round shape is the part that it was advised by them. So since I didn't uh, have anything to do with this part or the company didn't have to do anything with this part in terms of uh, pro uh, modeling or designing the, the implant, I haven't uh, included in this image. So here you see a maxillofacial implant for a person who lost the mandible in a blast, a bomb blast, and then it was impossible to have any type of maxillofacial uh, implant for him due to many uh, different limitations. And uh, we designed it here in DRSK, a three-segment uh, uh, implant, which was, uh, um, which was, uh, uh, which was, I think it was in 2016, if I'm not wrong. And uh, for some years I followed it and the patient was uh, completely fine. So here there is a QR code that if you want to know more about it, please uh, look at it later on or uh, in the future when you probably see the video. Uh, then I'm going to talk about dental education and then why uh, it is important for me and also for my company. Uh, the reason that I myself uh, was concentrating on the this area was that I was uh, I was trained uh, as a dentist and I knew the uh, the area. And also I was teaching uh, from for many years, even before I come to Sweden in Iran also, I was teaching in, in university. So for these both, uh, both uh, sides, I already knew. And when I studied computer sciences, I understood that if I uh, use all three different knowledges, I can bring new things to the market. And in 2009, I started the company and it was a one man company. And uh, Oh, during uh, two, three years, I could get uh, more uh, friends into the company. Uh, and now uh, we are producing uh, models mainly for the uh, dental market. Of course, we are doing some projects also, which I will show you here. So uh, this is one of the projects that we did. It's uh, a, a game, which is... Uh, a serious game actually uh, and it's a, a multi-level game 
it can be run on mobile or tablet and why did we do that actually we in i think it was 2014 that for a period of time we were a bit less busy and we had one uh, one dentist and also one uh, programmer uh, which were less uh, which had less to do and then i gave this uh, task to them that uh, they in, invest their time and also i myself contributed a bit in the design of the whole idea and after one year we had an app uh, which uh, could uh, let me see if i can run it here um, Mm -hmm. So the problem is that I I cannot run this one now. My okay now. So here you see that it's a game which the dental the dental students actually uh, should play with it and then uh, the aim of this app is to give the dental students uh, both fun and the knowledge and um, the, 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 the app is paused at the moment and uh, the reason uh, I mean the development is paused and the reason is that we had a lot to do and uh, we didn't have any time to concentrate and uh, invest into this project uh, but uh, still we are very um, happy and uh, open to collaborate with somebody to to continue this project if uh, the situation calls it so here uh, there is another project that uh, the, uh, we uh, concentrated on i think it was 2016 that we got this uh, task from uh, Kavo. Uh, they had a system that the students were uh, drilling the tooth or pre pre prepping the tooth, and then uh, this uh, s scanner could tell them, uh, or they were scanning the tooth, and the software was telling them how good or bad the preparation is. But the problem that they had, or the, it was not a problem really, but the wish that they had was that the teeth would have a pulp, a pulp chamber um, that they didn't have at that time. So what we did, we 3D modeled pulp for the tooth. So even if the physical tooth didn't have any uh, pulp inside it, still they could the students could uh, see it or see the preparation um, proxy to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the pulp chamber so why dental models uh, are important uh, you see that it's very obvious we have lots of risks when we are working on patients so it's very uh, natural that we think of using models and uh, there are always sterilization concerns uh, that uh, uh, is always there and also we should uh, let the trainees to have the same fair situation uh, when we are working on the teeth you know that uh, it's always a uh, challenge that the, the 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 canals are different or the costs are different and also if we want to concentrate on one specific part of the tooth it's almost always impossible to find a situation that all the students work with the same uh, uh, treatment so uh, here i have a very interesting image just for you to get out from this <laughs> straight line of my talking uh, we had some traditional simulation models which uh, they are very fine i mean today also it's sold uh, there are uh, non-human those are non-human models it, it is possible to reproduce them in very huge number uh, the 
the students will be fairly evaluated and it's possible to repeat a procedure. But there is, uh, or at least there are two main problems there. The models are not sus satisfactory and it, they are not realistic actually. And then some of the procedures were not uh, uh, possible at all to be, um, to be practiced on the traditional models. So we, uh, I mean, I started with my ideas and then we, when I say we, I mean DRSK, uh, we started to think of new models to improve the simulation and also we uh, add some interactive functions uh, to the to the models if possible and also there would be possible hopefully to customize the models this this was the thought that we must be able to customize the two models the problem with the traditional models is that the models are normally just one two three types and this customization is not there so we come up uh, with the idea of an endodontic model uh, around 2010 uh, and then it took many years until we could deliver the tooth that we had planned for it I think the first one we could we succeeded to deliver 2016 uh, or late 2015, uh, and there we had uh, the chance to talk to many dentists and many uh, universities, and we tried to develop our models since then. And today we have many different variations and anatomic uh, anatomical shapes. Uh, and here you can see, for example, three of the models, the root canal models that are uh, uh, produced uh, in, in, in the RSK. Uh, they, if you look at the pulp in the center, uh, I mean the tooth in the center, you see that the pulp is very anatomically shaped and also the pulp tissue is very important part of this model because the pulp tissue is very similar to the real pulp tissue so it's not any va wax that uh, uh, when you are drilling it, it, is, uh, it is like giving you a feeling of a fake tooth uh, and also uh, we have a very tiny, uh, tiny canal uh, size. Uh, we have the canal sizes as narrow as 0 0.08 millimeter at apex and above the apex, uh, which is uh, a very good option and for the, the models which are going to be used for root canal treatment uh, training. Uh, the other uh, the other advantage of these models are the hardness of them because the hardness is very similar to the dentin and here you see that uh, the model is almost radio opaque to an acceptable extent it is almost heat resistant so the different obturation techniques can be practiced on uh, this polish of the surface is uh, is is good enough it's like uh, uh, very easily you can see what is happening inside the transparency is there and also it's possible to customize the models so here you see two different uh, variations of the same tooth here you see the uh, class 2 according to one of the classifications uh, class 2 merging uh, mb2 and here you see the class 3 uh, which are the separated uh, uh, from orifice to apex and you can see that we can have it in different uh, uh, colors of the crown uh, so um, actually this is part of the uh, variations that I'm talking about we have many different models we are producing prosthodontic treatment post endo models we call them apexification retreatment demonstration of irrigation periapical lesion here for example you see one of the models which can be used for uh, periapical lesion here you see some of the models of the 221 maxillary uh, incisor so here you can see that it's an intact tooth it's uh, pre-accessed 
pre-accessed with uh, pulp material inside. Here you can see an open apex model, uh, models for uh, training, um, uh, training um, um, post core. Uh, I have some videos that I will show you the, during uh, the presentation. Soon they will come. Uh, so here uh, are another variations of the same models, variations. And uh, here I want to explain to you one of the cases that uh, I was involved in. Uh, it was an S-shaped canal model. Uh, I met uh, Dr. Uh, Antonis uh, Caniotis in uh, ESE 2000, I think it was 17, in Belgium, and we talked about uh, this tooth, and he didn't have any CBCT or any model of the tooth. The tooth was already um, uh, root canal treated, and it was in the mouth of the patient, so there was no chance for us to get anything out of the mouth. And we um, designed and developed this model, and here I have a video of the same model where Dr. Antonis uh, is uh, working on it and uh, maybe you can see how important is this uh, uh, this uh, I mean what an important role can the model play in in training and also in presentation of devices and also in in continuing education uh, this model is one of the models which are used uh, in many uh, educations around the world uh, so uh, here it's finally finished and I'm going to <clears throat> move to another uh, video where shows the same uh, the same tooth but inside a container and that container is another part that I'm going to talk to you about. So here you see that uh, uh, Dr. Antonis is uh, uh, doing the same procedure uh, and Mm. Yeah, uh, when it shows the tooth outside the mouse or the container which the tooth was uh, inside, uh, you see that uh, it is done very well. Um, I don't expect anything else from him actually. So here is the Colton Parapost. It's uh, one uh, product of the company Colton. Uh, which they wanted to present to their customers and here we help them with a model. Uh, this is the model uh, that uh, they will use it uh, to show to their uh, customers how to use their system. Uh, the video is speed up. I hope that it doesn't take uh, your patients away uh, yeah so you see that uh, it is uh, prepared and also the one of the advantages of these models is that the model uh, is uh, compatible with uh, with composites so you can see here that uh, the um, post is uh, cured inside the tooth um, soon I will finish it. I tried to have high speed videos. So here you see that it is uh, added and then it continues. So here you see the other product of uh, DRSK. Uh, which the idea came from me that we should have a container for the models which are not screwed because normally the uh, models are screwed into the jaws and it should be possible to easily remove even the model from the jaw. So uh, we produce this jaw model uh, 
that are compatible with different type of uh, tooth models that we are selling. Here you can see the same tooth that uh, was uh, uh, treated with the uh, post uh, the the posts a couple of minutes ago, uh, and <clears throat> here you will see that. Um, uh, it is a con. I mean, you can easily uh, put the tooth inside this model, and you can even have rubber dam around the tooth. Here, there is no rubber dam uh, around the tooth itself, but uh, the, it's in some of the videos I have seen that the, the rubber dam is used. So here, there is another model uh, and another application of the models that we are producing. Uh, it's a model with a, po a post already attached to it for removal of the post uh, and uh, yeah so here is another uh, tooth uh, for pediatric uh, practice practice uh, you can see that uh, the trainee can uh, work with the model um, and you will see that uh, how uh, naturally the tooth will look like when the pulp is exposed actually the pulp is made of the material which is very soft here the exposure has happened yeah, here you will see uh, the pulp material uh, yeah so I will move to the next. Here is the same tooth, but uh, you will see how this feeling of dropping in the pulp, I mean, the pulp exposure is helping the students to get the feeling uh, of the natural situation uh, on a live patient. So we are working with low speed we don't have any high speed in the company um, but i think it's enough to show the usage and how the model yeah here okay so we talked about different applications of the models uh, now here i am going to show you a restorative model here you see a model which is having a a um, 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 feeling very similar to uh, amalgam feeling and you see a curious lesion underneath and the material which we have as curious lesion is uh, very close to the um, the uh, natural uh, curious lesion uh, we have an exodontia model which is in prototype um, uh, phase but it's, it may be interesting to uh, see how does it work actually um, here we will see a tooth 26 the sound cannot be played unfortunately the sound is very uh, life like sound but you feel the how similar is it uh, when it comes to movement of the hand uh, to the real life so this is something that we will deliver uh, hopefully the next year to the market mm, here is an old uh, I should I should pause this I should try to play this because it's a pity if I cannot play let me see okay You can hear different sounds. 
you can hear different sounds from a sensor which is located on the tooth on the uh, sorry joe here you see that the needle is going in you will see different colors now you see a red color which shows that you are getting off from the side that should be needle go in as soon as the students see a green light it means that he, the student is in the correct uh, location and so here the uh, green uh, is uh, met and also uh, we have something to inject into the uh, jaw uh, so after injecting we take it off and we wait there is sound you probably hear so here you see that a light is uh, turning on and you see more and more reddish color in the jaw which means that the model is going to be anesthetized but uh, it takes a, s a small amount of time i will fast forward uh, forward it to uh, save a bit amount of time here you see that the sensors are completely numb and uh, the student can work uh, on the model uh, if there is any tooth <laughs> we had uh, the tooth before so this model actually we are not selling today it is pause it's a project uh, that we started uh, or at, actually i started 2009 uh, there is a patent for this model uh, and um, but uh, the there are some challenges uh, about the production that uh, we are uh, modifying the model and soon hopefully this model will be in the market again uh, so here you see that uh, the light is uh, gradually going off the uh, color red if uh... okay now it has started and when i touch the sensors again you will see that uh, the model starts to complain again uh, so here i should bring back my yes so i talked about the advantages pros of the digital technology but i want to emphasize that there are many cons about that so the first one iad internet addiction disorder and that is a term used by professionals the medical professionals to describe a situation a problematic situation uh, which is a compulsive internet use i mean it's a it's a person who has the uh, compulsory compulsive sorry compulsive uh, mm, action uh, in order to use the internet over and over we have less social interaction we have a breach of copyright laws and more distractions to daily life is coming by digital technology and also we have threatened personal privacy also with lots of uh, advertisements and uh, unwanted things coming to us all the time um, environment uh, is it affected is it uh, less affected or more affected it's a pros or cons i have no idea and the dependency how much dependent am i or are you to digital technology today can you go anywhere without any gps can you live a week without your mobile phone so these are the things that should be answered by somebody else or you should yourself look at it so anyway it seems that the disadvantages are not inherent to the technology itself but it is related to me who is using the technology is it really like that is it really pros which are overweighing the cons uh, let's look at this one for a better start in life start cola earlier yeah go back to 50s more doctors smoke, smoke camels than any other cigarette 
Um, so when I look at this, I'm not sure what I have said is true or not. So I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if the things that I have found are real. That is why I put this one for you also, the eight spiders. It's talking about circular reporting. Please watch this video on YouTube. It's very interesting, which says that whatever we see or hear, we should not believe in from internet, of course. So here is another uh, uh, image from a lake close by uh, where I live. It's Ibohu, and you can look at the uh, some information by scanning the QR code. Here it is the link of the uh, the URL of the company. I am found on Facebook by the name of Said Kazemi, and um, uh, I'm not very active in social networks. But anyway, if you contact me, I by sure will reply you. It can be a bit delayed, but I will come back to you. So thank you very much for the, uh, the opportunity and also for your patience to listen to me. Now I'm open to listen to your questions if there is any. Wow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you so much, doctor, for sharing all of this. I, um, I felt like I should go back to dental school <laughs> with, <laughs> with all, you know, with all the, the training that you're showing. And, and I think it's, uh, I graduated in 1993. So it, okay. it's been, uh, 28 years or so. No. Uh, do, you know, this, this is so timely if I think if the schools have these models, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, I, I I don't know about Sweden, but like in the United States, one of the very um, you know a lot of the Facebook groups here, we we talk about the schools because of COVID um, mm -hmm. and social distancing, not allowing the students to see so many patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, my daughter goes to UCLA. She just she just mm -hmm. a second student. But what they do is they open a night clinic, right? Okay. So, so it's a morning, usually it's morning session, afternoon session. Now there's an evening session. So the students, mm -hmm. because you know the number of students have to be less, so they are there are fewer in the clinic, and then they mm -hmm. have to spread out the hours. But imagine if we have some of these models where it can simulate the the learning, right? Mm -hmm. There's some have not even been able to start cases. I'm, I'm not talking about UCLA, but I'm talking about in mm. general in groups, um, Facebook groups that I'm in. But that's one of the concerns that we don't have enough time now for the students to to see all the patients in order to graduate because of uh, COVID. The, mm. Are these uh, obviously is for preclinical? Um, the the schools that you uh, that you work with. Um, is that how they are using these models? Because I mean, uh, I, I I specifically love the one where you give um, a mandibular block, right? <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to, to the the feel that going about this high or going at this angle will actually mm -hmm. the jaw. I think I think that is because a lot of time when when the when the, the professor is explaining, it's a little hard to to understand, and until you go in there and give a shot, then you're going to feel, okay, you go this way, you're going to hit the bone, um, mm. or maybe you aspirate and you see the blood, but it's a little too late and you're, you're already working on probably your best mm. friend first and then you, the patient. So is that mm. how they're using these models, just, just pre-clinical, or is it also in addition to the clinic? Actually, the, I mean, it uh, differs from uh, section to section. I mean, in some universities, uh, they are really advanced and they have very advanced models and technologies they are using already. But uh, some of the universities are very traditional. So we are selling to the universities which like to uh, use the cutting edge technologies. And right. uh, in, in 
in, in the COVID time, as you said also, our situation is much more hectic due to the fact that many people think like you said, so they are not allowed to see, uh, to visit uh, patients and they need really right. to learn. So um, it, 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 it is, it's different from university to, to university, if I have understood your question correctly, but there are right. many universities today that are using either our models or the competitor models. I mean, there are competitors also uh, in the market which are much more, uh, much stronger that, than what uh, DRSK is, at, at least in terms of marketing and also technology maybe. And uh, the, in in US also, I know that there are at least two companies which are delivering the products. But it's uh, I'm 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 more than happy to deliver any number of uh, our models to UCLA if 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 anybody <laughs> will contact us. Uh, and actually, about this uh, injection model that I have in the mouth of my friend here, uh, that 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 uh, we I saw that there was a. Uh, research or a study in Tufts University, if I pronounce it correctly, in the US. Tuff? Yeah, Tufts University. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they 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 were uh, they were very satisfied with the with their research, and they contacted us afterward many times uh, after the, the the usage of the model. But actually, we, as I told you, we have paused this process because we had some challenges. We sold some tens of this model to different universities to four countries. Uh, and then also we provided uh, US with uh, some uh, free models for their, uh, their research. But now at the moment, this is uh, paused. But the other models that I showed you, they are all uh, sold and used in different universities, mostly in Europe, but in the rest of the world as well. Yeah, I, I also love the one extracting the molar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it, mm -hmm. it, the, the, the simulation does look very real. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how much force the student actually need to use or if they need to use an elevator <laughs> before mm -hmm. extraction. Yeah. Actually, uh, we have some models also that uh, it's like a broken tooth that the elevator should be used. So there is no, uh, okay. there is no way to take to extract the tooth. And also in in the in these models, we have different uh, variations in, in 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 the complete tooth. Some of them are more attached, and an elevator must be used. The 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 video that I showed you was showing a very simple extraction model, which it's possible to use forceps in order to extract the tooth. Right, right. Well, um, as you were talking, I, I I was taking pictures and picking up some of those QR codes, obviously. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna share your uh, your link for uh, DSRK mm -hmm. with with one of my contacts at UCLA. Um, mm, sure. So they can always look that up and hopefully reach out to you. I also mm. share this uh, this uh, uh, broadcast here in a in a big dental group uh, mm. that we have about twenty seven mem twenty seven thousand members in there. Um, okay. Mo mostly dentists, some consultants, uh, um, and um, and that's one where we we have one of those hot discussions with you know how we're going to train the students to, to be ready uh, because, mm. as you know, even before COVID time, sometimes we don't have enough student, uh, patients mm. in, here mm. in the state, depending on the location of the school. Uh, mm -hmm. And because usually dental school may provide dental services at a little bit lower fee uh, for mm. the trade-off is obviously the time that mm -hmm. the patient is in the chair because, you know, it's a teaching environment. And, mm. uh, but it's always been a challenge to get enough students I mean, mm. enough patience for the students to practice on. And I think any kind of additional training, because dentistry is so much hands-on, um, would, would be one, wonderful. Yeah, well, sure. Yeah. Mm. yeah, well, it's a great, great presentation. Mm. Uh, I, I, I totally love it. Like I said, I'm sitting here thinking, I should go back to dental school. This, <laughs> this, this, gonna, this is going to make it much better. <laughs> <laughs> it will be very interesting. I, 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 will, I will send you some models. I will ask my colleagues to son, send you some models. We will talk about it later on. And then you can practice at home. There is no need to go I, back to the school. 
<laughs> well, you know what? I, I yeah, no, I would I would love that if you would send me some models. Sure. I would, for sure. Um, share it with some of the dental schools here because I, mm -hmm. from where I live, is driving distance to four dental schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I can, yeah. that I can probably just come by and and impress them. So, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Really a wonderful presentation for uh, an early Sunday morning mm -hmm. <laughs> over here. Well, mm -hmm. um, I know that you you're doing this obviously to to help train our colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see yourself in twenty years? What what will doctor? Oh, yeah, what would Dr. Kazemi be doing in 20 years? Oy, <laughs> that's a very difficult question to answer. Actually, the, de the, the, the digital de technology is growing uh, extremely fast. And I cannot say anything really about that. I uh, think that in maybe five to 10 years, there will be a revolution in in again digital technology as it was in the last 10 years and when i say digital technology i mainly mean the production part of digital technology and because now the 3d printers the 3d scanners that part is growing very fast and maybe one day they can even 3d print a live creature which you can uh, treat the tooth <laughs> already a company Nissin company has a robot that uh, the, the, it's very interesting to work on uh, but uh, still it's not a printed uh, the real right. life <laughs> patient but um, right. uh, yeah, yeah so in 20 years i think many things will happen that i cannot foresee from today yeah, well, especially when you're involved in the technological world, right? Where where things just mm. move so much faster mm. than our than exactly. our regular world. So uh, exactly. you know, it's it's been a great pleasure to host you this morning. A great honor, side. and I'm totally totally impressed. And um, thank you very much for taking time out uh, during your busy day and share with us your expertise. Like I said, I think. Uh, your this this broadcast let me let me check real quick i think it's share in the 220 share um mm -hmm. 220 different groups on mm -hmm. facebook and uh, like i said i i share this broadcast in a in a group uh we, we call it dental naturals and, mm -hmm. uh, and it has twenty seven thousand members and uh, to, to, to get the word out and to to help our our young colleagues and um, yeah. wonderful that you fulfill your dream. Yeah, and sure. Any last advice for us, doctor? Uh, actually, no advice. I just want to thank you and the uh, your group uh, for this opportunity. And also, I wish and I hope that in future we can more contribute with the uh, with the dental uh, section in in any aspect in different aspects and we i mean me and the rsk we are working mainly with with the parts that i explained uh, in this in this uh, broadcast so uh, we are open to to get in touch with new people just don't hesitate to contact me or us and it will be a pleasure to do something together with you Thank you, doctor. And thank you for all our, our colleagues for um, following this broadcast today. We, uh, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast as much as, as, I did, as I did and hope everybody have a wonderful uh, Sunday. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.